Hello, I'm Jerry W. Now, in a recent video, we had the oscilloscope connected to a mains powered piece of equipment, which was a dimmer and various lamps. And I mentioned in that video that uh, if you can actually do that sort of thing, it's not just a question of shoving wires together, because if you connect a mains powered piece of equipment to most oscilloscopes, there's a very good chance of blowing something up. And uh, someone did actually ask as well if we could explain how that was actually connected. So let's have a look at the uh, setup we've got here. And then we'll see why there's certain things you need to be aware of before just randomly shoving things together. Now this is the arrangement we've got here, and it's pretty much what was used in the other video there. So this strip here is just the dimmer and the lamp there, and an extra switch there for switching it to a sort of bypass or whatever. And uh, the important thing is that the item that we're testing, which is basically this equipment here, is plugged into this isolating transformer here. So the item under test is not in fact, connected directly to the mains. And the other point as well is that this lead here, which is connected to the oscilloscope, this is a piece of coax with the project connector on the end. It's got this section here, which has got this brown heat shrink over it, because this is not just a lead that connects directly across the supply inside. What we've actually got in here is a voltage divider, which is basically uh, dividing it from a factor of 10 to 1. So if we say had uh, 250 volts there, for example, we would only get about 25 volts at this end, and it's essentially a chain of resistors. We'll have a look at that a bit later on in more detail. And uh, the reason for this is that uh, this is circuit on the front actually marks that it theoretically can deal with 400 volts peak maximum. But the problem with that is that the uh, settings on this one only go up to 5 volts per division, and as we've got eight divisions here, that only means that 40 volts would basically fill the screen. So in theory you could shove 400 volts in there, it's not going to be something you want to do because it wouldn't obviously fit on the screen. So this basically divides the voltage by 10 so that uh, what we're actually getting at then here is more sensible in terms of actually measuring what we've got here. And another fact to consider that uh, this is actually the peak voltage. Now in terms of the UK, the normal supply at sort of 230 or 240 or whatever, that represents a peak voltage or zero to peak of about 340. But another thing to consider, if you're plugging things directly into the mains, there's quite often going to be transients and spikes and things on the main supply, which in many cases can be vastly more than that. So again, you don't want to just be shoving it in directly. So you've got a pulse on the mains of, say, 600 volts or something for a short time. could easily damage or destroy parts within the oscilloscope. So hence we use the uh, voltage divider we've got here. Now the oscilloscope itself plugs directly into the main supply and not via the IC transformer. This is the plug uh, for here, so it goes around to the back. And the central problem with uh, using these without an isolated transformer for the item of testing is what we've got here. So if I just turn this around to continuity there, so I've got the two leads, and that just shows if they're connected. So if connect the lead here to the pin of the plug, this is the earth pin here, and we check continuity, we find that on the connector here, which is where the signal goes in, see that the connector itself is actually connected directly to the earth pin in the plug. And of course the same applies to the other one here, and the same actually applies to the metal case as well. Now that's all very well, but the problem with that is that if you're going to measure something which is also connected to the mains, as in its reference to the mains voltage, this lead coming off here is going to have an outer piece, which say normally would be the actual metal shell here, and that is going to be connected directly to mains earth. So if you connected that directly to a circuit and you accidentally connected the part of the lead that was connected to this to something say that was at 240 volts, what you've essentially done is connected 240 volts from the mains directly to earth. That is going to cause a short circuit. A very large amount of current is going to try and flow through this and through the oscilloscope. At the very best it's going to bust the fuse in the plug or trip out the circuit breaker and of course uh, shoving a substantial current in there in the region of hundreds or a couple of thousand of amps while the fault's there. It's quite likely to go to damage the oscilloscope and probably other things as well. And even if you just connected the ground side here to the effect of the neutral side of the circuit, there's still a problem there because if there's an RCD on the circuit, which certainly in the UK in most cases there most certainly will be, you then created a parallel path for current to return to. So if you do that it's going to trip the RCD in most cases. So it doesn't matter which way on the wires are, it's either tripping the RCD if you've got one, or in the other case it's going to be causing a short circuit directly between line and earth. Both things, of course, you want to avoid. Now it's important to note that the isolating transformer, which is along this uh, lead here, is used to power the item you're actually testing. 
therefore what's coming out of here, as in the line of neutral, is not reference to mains earth. So it doesn't matter which of these gets connected to the terminal here. It's not going to cause any kind of short circuit problem because there's no electrical connection between either of these and the mains earth, which comes on the metal piece at the front. Now you might be tempted to thinking, well, why not just power the oscilloscope from the isolated transformer? But this is a big fail because in most cases, including this one, the earth connection here on the isolated transformer input is connected to the actual socket here. So let's just uh, test it out on this uh, particular example. We'll connect it to the actual pin here. And then we'll just use the other pin to see if it's connected there. Yep, and sure enough, it is. So if you thought, well, we'll just take this isolated transformer and power the oscilloscope from it, of course the oscilloscope will work just fine. But the same problem exists because then this is still connected to mains earth. What you're testing and probing is still going to be referenced at the full mains voltage because you've plugged it in directly. And again, that same problem occurs. You can basically short out the mains via the oscilloscope. So that is not a recommended way of doing it. And it's say it doesn't actually solve the problem anyway. Now, if you don't happen to have an ISA transformer and you can't find one or can't buy one or whatever, then there is another couple of possible options here. The first one of which is to buy a special probe on the connects to the output here, which in itself is isolated. And these are typically a fairly sizable box. And one end goes into here, and then the actual probe leads coming out the other side are not electrically connected back to the oscilloscope. So effectively, it's another isolation transformer. It's just going on the output side here, so that uh, anything that's going in there is therefore not electrically connected to the actual probes. And these are fairly readily available. They're quite expensive items, several hundred pounds normally. But again, that is a possible choice there. And the uh, second choice, if you uh, want to do this, is to get an oscilloscope which is not powered from the mains. So this is going to mean battery powered, because of course if it's a battery powered item, it won't have any connection to mains earth or anything else. It's a completely self-contained freestanding unit. So again, that's a possible choice which you could use. But again, if you've got a battery powered scope, these two are still going to be connected together, so if you're going to be probing two things at once, do bear in mind that if it's got metal connectors, it's highly likely that they're still going to be electrically connected together. So again, you want to be absolutely sure that the ground or basically the outer connection here is going to be the same on both of the probes, because again, if you had one that was one way around and the other was the other, there's still a possibility of shorting out between the two metal outer rings there. Now there are battery powered oscilloscopes which actually had plastic outer rings on these, so that problem didn't occur, or they were entirely separated internally, but again that's something you need to check on the particular piece of equipment. Now the last thing which somebody might be tempted to do, and I'm sure there's uh, someone on the internet has uh, probably suggested this, the thing you never do is to disconnect the earth connection here and think, oh that's going to solve the problem because of course no earth connection means this isn't connected to earth and the problem has gone away. Now in one way that is true because if this isn't connected to mains earth then of course there's no potential of shorting out the mains. But uh, by disconnecting the earth here you've also created now a very dangerous situation in that whatever you're probing, if you connected a lead to the front of this, if uh, the ground side of that happens to be connected to the neutral, well that's not a problem, but if you then accidentally connected it to the line instead, what it means is that this is now at full mains voltage, so you're 240 volts there. And it also means that the case of the oscilloscope is also at 240 volts, so if you just accidentally brush against this, you're going to get a fairly fatal electric shock from that. So definitely not something you want to be doing. And bearing in mind, if you had a set of equipment, say on a rack or something in a set of shelving or something, not only would this become mains live on the outer case, so would anything else that happened to be touching up against it, and if it was metal shelving, the whole of the shelving could become live as well. So disconnecting the earth is definitely not a sensible option. It's actually an extremely dangerous thing to do. Now in terms of how it would look on an actual diagram, this is pretty much what we've got here. So a oscilloscope there, and the earth connection, most importantly, is actually connected to the K to the oscilloscope, and then internally connects through to the output uh, connection here, where your probe or whatever would attach. And then we've got a piece of equipment over here, which would be uh, obviously testing. That's connected to the mains power. And of course, the oscilloscope is also connected to mains power as well. But the important part here is the earth connection. So uh, a probe here would connect to the outer ring of the actual connection. And also there with the inner conductor as well, which is normally what you'd use for probing. And in order to use this, you've got to connect 
this one which is normally the black lead to some part of the circuit you're actually going to be testing and then the other one is the base of the probe which we'd just uh, place onto whatever items you've got and in the case of the setup we uh, saw earlier this is basically just two wires that come out and then they're connected across the main supply of the uh, line and neutral there now the middle one which goes into the uh, circuitry of the oscilloscope isn't generally a problem because that's not actually referenced to anything it's just a uh, connection through into whatever amplifiers and things are inside but to say this outer ring is connected through to the earth connection there so depending on where you connect this uh, one of two things is going to happen now if you connected this inside the equipment and it came into contact with the line conductor here basically we've now got a short circuit from line to earth and of course that goes via the oscilloscope itself so when you short out between those you're going to get a very large current flow typically in the order of a hundred or even a few thousand amps and that's all going to be flowing through the lead and through the oscilloscope and causing who knows what kind of damage and it may of course obviously blow the fuse and trip the circuit breaker but of course before then it's uh, obviously going to have damaged whatever's connected in the path the oscilloscope being the main item there and uh, rather than being connected here if you had somehow connected it in the piece of equipment and connected it to the neutral well again this is no good either because uh, if you've got an RCD on this circuit here that's going to be actually be monitoring the current in these two wires so the line and the neutral and of course when it's uh, imbalanced or different that's when the RCD would trip but by connecting the ground lead here you've now got say current coming on the line would normally all return on the neutral but now you've got current coming on the line some can return on the neutral but of course some can now return via the earth over to here and again you get an imbalance here fairly likely to trip the RCD so uh, tripping RCD or just blowing the circuit breaker and destroying something inside the oscilloscope both things you obviously want to avoid now in terms of what the isolating transformer does it basically puts a brake say here and all that's actually inside it is basically a coil of wire on the side where the main is coming in and then there's another coil of wire on the other side and there's no electrical connection between the two so once that's in place the uh, line and neutral here are no longer reference to earth there so you don't get any possibility of RC tripping or shorting out the mains because of course this is the whole circuit here there's only a magnetic coupling across here so it doesn't actually matter which one you connect to and that's generally the safest option there and so important to note that you're powering the equipment you're testing with the ISAC transformer and not the oscilloscope as we saw on that one that we've got in the uh, other shed there the earth connection is still connected through anyway it only actually isolates on the line and neutral and that's a fairly common scenario and I've said there you don't disconnect the earth to the oscilloscope because if you did then you're basically connecting say to the line here and then the oscilloscope frame and all on it it becomes live at 240 volts and then if you touch that then you will die so that's not sensible or recommended choice either now in terms of that lead that we're using essentially it's just a piece of coaxial cable there with the uh, inner core and the outer screened covering with that BNC connector on the end and also that's what connects to the oscilloscope but uh, in that uh, brown heat shrink covered section we've actually got a set of resistors so let's draw in what uh, we've actually got there so we've got a whole line of these resistors and they're all in series so we've actually got 10 resistors all in series there and these resistors are actually one mega ohm each or one million ohms so 10 of them of course in series makes uh, 10 mega ohms in total and so they're all connected in series like that and then uh, the other wire is basically connected here like that and then at this point here just after the one resistor at the end got the extra wire coming off like that and then here is where the actual oscilloscope is connected so that would be where the uh, BNC connector is for the oscilloscope so this would be the sort of the ground the outer connection and then this is the signal on the center and then at this end is where the actual item is being connected so I'll put sort of a load there so that would be in the case of that one that would be connected across the line and neutral of the thing we were actually testing and the result of this is that basically at this end here all that's seeing is the 
10 mega ohm resistance there. So the amount of current that flows here is going to be pretty much next to nothing. And then at this end, we're only going to get one tenth of the voltage. Because essentially we're dividing the voltage across all of these 10 resistors. And we're taking the signal off from just the one at the end. So we're getting obviously a tenth of the voltage. So if we had, say, 240 volts there, we would actually only get 24 volts at the oscilloscope end over there. Now I might be wondering why not just use a normal probe like this, or something like this. Now this is a fairly typical Chibomatic oscilloscope probe, and as in the case of most of these, these are generally referred to as times 10 probes, although in reality they're dividing by 10, because on the side here we've got this little switch, which has got 1 and 10. So in the 1 position it's just basically a uh, straight through, and then on the 10 position it's putting a 10 mega in resistance and tapping off a bit, very similar to what we've got here. Now in theory you could use that, but there's a couple of problems there. First of all, these things are often not rated for mains use. This is only some cheapo thing, so who knows what it's rated for. And the whole point of using a whole row of 10 individual resistors is that the voltage across any one of those is only going to be about 24 volts. Many resistors are not actually rated for use in the sort of hundreds of volt range, so depending on what's inside of here, of course, the resistor may not be rated for 240 volts at all. And the other problem with these is specifically this style with the option of uh, 1 and 10 is if you just put it in the 1 position by mistake, then of course you're going to get the full 240 coming out at the end over here. So in theory you can use it, and uh, in reality probably not such a good idea to use. And as I said before, you've also got the possibility with the mains of having various transients on the mains, sort of a spike of fairly high voltage for a short duration, which in most cases isn't going to damage, say, normal equipment. But in terms of an oscilloscope, which has a fairly sensitive amplifier on the front end, if you're going to shove, say, a 800 volt spike in there, very likely going to actually damage something. And certainly in the case of these resistors, if you only had one, then of course uh, the voltage could easily be exceeded if it was just a single one, and it could either be destroyed or arc across or who knows what. So uh, 10 in a row, so you get the voltage divided over the whole length. And of course uh, there's no switch or anything to accidentally leave in the wrong position. Now this is a 10 to 1 divider, so basically it's 240 there and 24 out, but uh, you can of course make these in other arrangements as well. You could do say a 20 to 1 divider either by having say 20 resistors in the line and tapping off the end of it, or uh, ultimately you could have say a line of the 1 mega and resistors and then just have two at the end, one of which was say a half a mega and another half a mega and tap off from the very last one again, and that will give you a 20 to 1 divider. So in the case of this one we're calling out a 10 to 1, so 240 volts in gives you 24 volts out, and if you may say a uh, 20 to 1 divider then 240 volts in would only give you 12 volts out. And again you can have the voltages coming in, so if you want to measure something say with a much higher voltage, again the same principles do apply. So in summary then you've got uh, three real options. Isolating transformer for the device under test, so in other words the equipment that you're actually testing. You could also use a battery powered oscilloscope, or one that doesn't actually connect to the main, so of course that would uh, avoid the problem there. Although still be wary of the fact that if it has metal actual connectors then there's a possibility of parts of the oscilloscope becoming live. So you can get some which have uh, plastic outer connectors to avoid that problem. And the other choice is to use an isolated probe or set of probes. And again, that's generally a big box with the uh, oscilloscope at one end and the probes at the other. But any of those options are perfectly fine. What is not fine is using an isolated transformer for the oscilloscope itself. As I say, it's seen there that in most cases the earth is still connected through, so that achieves nothing. And the most dangerous option is to disconnect the earth on the oscilloscope, because although that will avoid the thing shorting out, it can then result in the oscilloscope itself becoming live, the whole casing of it and the controls on the front, and anything else happens to be touching it on the shelf. So very dangerous options, and if you use these then you will die. These ones, of course, are the sensible choices. So that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.